All right, good morning, Days with Jordan the Lion. Good to see you guys. I'm using the new camera. Can you tell the difference? I'm inside. Uh, I, I don't really know how all the functions work. I got a little bit of a crash course from my friend Jonas last night on maybe how to do some of the settings so I can get some good shots. And um, I'm going to take it out and try and use it today and see what happens. Um, it's a little different to get used to, but I don't think it'll be that bad. I, I mean, I think it's going to be good, but I think getting used to it won't be all that bad. So, as far as I know, I haven't been canceled on. We are going to go visit my friend Jeff Scott. And what Jeff Scott is, um, is going to be on the show about today is Jeff Scott used to be Pee Wee Herman. What? Yeah. Jeff Scott used to be a Pee Wee Herman impersonator, and he's going to tell us all about it. Let's go. Well, we're over at Jeff's place, and if you can't tell one of the reasons that Jeff and I would get along, right there, that wall. He is also a Vincent Price fanatic, as am I. And I actually used to have that right there. And that's, that right there is pretty much what we came to talk about. Yuppers. As I told you guys before, there was also another Pee Wee. <coughs> and this is him. Yeah, clearly, clearly I, an identical double. Well, tell, can you tell everybody how you got involved in the Pee Wee world, where that came from? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, um, in uh, summer of 85, I moved from Ohio to uh, Cleveland, Ohio, where I was living. Uh, first time I moved out of state. And I was uh, moved to uh, Provincetown in Cape Cod and was playing piano at uh, a couple cabaret rooms. My mentor was supposed to go down and direct a show there. And he's like, you've got to come down. You can get a job playing piano, you know. And he ended up getting a different show and not going. But I decided, what the hell, I'd save this money. I'm going to go live down there and just, you know, find out what Your cabaret. first time away from home, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, I was 23. And... Uh, so I start. I got a couple jobs real quick playing piano at different places, uh, and I was uh, I had done Waylon Flowers' Puppet Madam for Halloween years ago, uh, Waylon, and uh, somewhere around here there's a picture of me in my costume, and actually the mask is in the hallway in there, my hall of props. But uh, I brought Madam's costume down with me because my mentor said yeah you should take that you know there's all these crazy cabaret shows and there was a place called the Pied Piper uh this lady Linda Gerard and some other women owned it uh it was one of the lesbian bars there it was the lesbian bar and they had like an open mic night so I would go in and do peewee once in a while just for the fun of it were you a fan of peewee or you just happened to be I, I'm sorry not peewee I, I, before peewee I was doing madam okay that's what I was doing doing madam no I didn't know who peewee was I had seen him a few times on letterman you know, this was 85, so he'd already been on Letterman a couple times. And the uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure had just come out that summer or fall. I can't remember if it was already out when I was there. Was, his, the, was the TV show, the kids' show, was that before or after, after. Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah that came after. Because that's when I kind of jumped in. I saw Pee Wee's Big Adventure in the, in the drive-in theater, but I actually was more of a fan of, of the kids' show because of my age. Yeah, well, and everything changed, too. I mean, that's why uh, Big Top was completely different because by that... Oh, you're right. It had already... The TV show had aired because this was, once again, the movies were different. They weren't connected to the Playhouse characters right. and stuff, you know. So by the time this one came out, I think everybody was expecting the Pee Wee Herman show. Or, yeah, you know. the kids' show. Right. Uh, anyway, at the at the uh, the club that I was doing Madam at, just as a goof, there was a guy that hosted. He was a six foot four Liza Minnelli drag queen impersonator. <laughs> of course, impersonator. After what's yeah, four, yeah. Four, four, like I have to say that. Uh, and he knew that I played piano, and he was going to be doing a couple weekends at one of the other clubs, and was like, "Can I hire you to you know do piano?" And while I'm making my costume changes, you can do Madam. And I'm like, "Okay, sure." And we did a weekend, and all his friends were like, your pianist looks like Pee Wee Herman. And, you know, I, I didn't get it. Uh, I think it was just because I had, the, and, and back then, Pee Wee originally had parted hair. Yeah. 
uh, and a, and a, a dark blue suit. So uh, anyway, this this guy was like encouraged me to do it. He's like, you can do two characters in the show now. I'm like, all right. So uh, that's what we did. Uh, he, I got a suit at a thrift store there and a little tie, and he helped me uh, sort of like memorize some stupid jokes that he wrote for me, Pee Wee style. And that was the start of it. And then when I moved at the end of the summer, when I moved back to Cleveland, uh, there was a, a comedy club in Akron called Hilarities. And they had an open mic, and I went down there to do, uh, you know, try to do stand-up, take the, from this little cabaret setting into maybe stand-up, you know? Yeah. Because there wasn't, there are, there's no cabaret. You were trying to do your own stuff originally? Oh, yeah. I okay. always did my own material. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's a rule in impersonating that, like, uh, all my photos, I'll show you some, they all say Jeff Scott as Pee Wee. Yeah. You have to do that, you know. Uh, there was a guy in Vegas for years that... Uh, impersonated Joan Rivers and he used her jokes verbatim and she eventually sued and that changed the whole thing for impersonators you know so I write all my or wrote all my own material but in the you know the peewee style uh, and then I can't even remember what early cable show some cable show did like five uh, television shows from hilarities in Akron and I emceed them uh, as Pee Wee or as yeah, you? Yeah, as Pee Wee. No, wow. as Pee Wee. And then I came up to Cleveland and I started getting gigs like going to kids' birthday parties and going to a shopping mall, you know, just silly gigs, local like things like going on the, any place that a local news celebrity would be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so nothing that amazing. But then I got, my, my, my background at that point was in mime and musical theater. I was the top working mime in Cleveland, which means I was the only one. Well, <laughs> yeah. there, were, there were a few others, but I was the one that got all the work. And uh, uh, so I got hired at SeaWorld. The original SeaWorld is in Ohio. That, that's the one I've been to. Yeah, Aurora, which most people don't know. They're like, what? I'm like, well, it's the farthest place away from an ocean. Yeah. So that's why you have it there. Nobody can go to the ocean in Ohio. Uh, so they hired me in 87, and I was doing uh, mime uh, pre-show, like, uh, just sort of uh, improv, goofing around with people as they walked in at the Sea Lion and Otter show. And then they were going to be doing a brand new show that year called Summer Nights that were all different shows in every single, like the Dolphins had a night show, Shamu had a night show, and then there was a, uh, a brand new laser and fireworks show. The first time in the country that a theme park, even before Disney, had multicolored lasers and fireworks. And they'd written this character, the Maestro. Just, you know, sort of a pantomime type character yeah. with long hair. Like, pee uh, like uh, Bugs Bunny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cartoon, That's what I was you know? thinking. And because of my mime stuff, they're like, well, we want you to do this nighttime show also. You know, pays more and you can do both shows. You can work your ass off for us. And you got paid double. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Uh, so right around that same time, there was a morning show in Cleveland. Uh, I think it's still on. It's called The Morning Exchange. And every year to kick off the summer season, they would do a live remote from SeaWorld. And they were going to do an interview with me like in the summer because they'd been, I'd been, locally I was getting tons of work. It was I just, bet. Just I mean, Pee Wee was, at, Pee -wee was and, the biggest thing in the country at yeah, that point. Yeah, and all over Ohio. And uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, the ad campaign that we did for SeaWorld Summer Nights uh, they had a helicopter shot, and this camera crew that came in from New York, unbeknownst to us until they got to shooting my part of the show, they were the film crew that was filming Pee Wee's Playhouse the very first season in a studio in New York. Right. So the commercial got edited right under his nose, and they showed him, and they were like, you, you know. Oh, wow. So he had like, seen your you're work. Like, you're like 10 years, you know, Pee Wee 10 years earlier, and because... I'm actually, I think I'm 11 years younger than Paul Rubens, but, uh, but you know, nobody thought anything of that. And then yeah. it was like, hey, you're using, you know, you're selling SeaWorld with the image. So they all, Pee Wee's people negotiated and stuff. And that's when I finally started to learn about like the legalities of what you can and can't do. Right. Impersonating. And, uh, but anyway, they, they uh, SeaWorld uh, hired me to just play the maestro. Then cut to, like, the beginning of the summer, a week before we opened the show as the maestro. I'm on the morning uh, exchange, live from SeaWorld, but as Pee-wee. 
you know, something totally unrelated to what I'm doing at CPAC. Yeah. And do my little clip. And I've, I've, got, I've got the video here. I was looking at all these old videos because it's just like my voice was, I never had the voice. It was, ugh. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so at the end of the show, the host goes, and you can see Jeff Scott as Pee Wee Herman here every night this year hosting the Laser and Fireworks show, which was like, yes, you can see me here every yeah, night hosting the Laser and Fireworks show, but no, not as Pee Wee. And I was at the park for an hour after the show. The, the, uh, the, the water ski stadium where they did the show yeah. sat... Uh, what was it? 3,000? 2,500 people? I think it was 2,500 people. And at an hour after the show behind the stadium, I was still there surrounded by all the kids that were there. And, and, and the vice president from Anheuser-Busch uh, in San Diego happened to be at the park that day for this big TV show. And <laughs> he came up to me and he said, Come to the uh, talent uh, to the uh, entertainment office when you're done here with all this, and I'm like, oh god, I'm going to get fired. What did I say? I didn't say anything wrong about SeaWorld. We promoted the whole park and all, and they're like, uh, we want you to do the laser show as Pee Wee instead of wow. this maestro character, and it's like, and we open in a week. Good news for me because was there a script? Did they want you to come up with a script for the that show? Was the bad or? News. No, there was a script, and the poor girl that had worked and written it and worked so hard to produce this whole thing, and all had to like have all new tracks recorded, and basically be told your script is kaput, and Jeff is going to be improving the entire show wow. till it comes down to. I mean, I had basic, I knew basic lines that I had to say. Yeah, but. I also said to them, I've got to, if you want Pee Wee, I've got to be able to improv this. I said, we'll improv around. You tell me what's good and what's not. But since yeah. we only have a week to rehearse. You know, now, now, how long was, were you Pee Wee? How long did you do the Pee Wee character? Uh, from uh, first time was 85. And then uh, up until uh, 80, uh, late 89 after I'd done the the. Now, body, body doubling. Now, did you ever... Yeah, we'll get to that. Did you ever get <laughs> tired of of being Pee-wee? Did you ever feel like you were losing your identity? <laughs> it, or? Wasn't, it wasn't as bad in Cleveland when I moved out here to L.A. And I was uh, I had a one-year contract to go around at a custom car show. So, I, I was, you know, they send out soap opera stars and all. I was going out with every weekend with uh, Jonathan Frakes, Commander Riker from Star Trek. Uh, Julie McCullough from Growing Pains, yeah. actually, who does stand up. <laughs> I, <laughs> Wasn't she in Playboy, too? Yes, yes. That was right during that time. The and, Kirk and, Cameron, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I had... Uh, what the hell was the question? <laughs> oh, I was just asking if you ever got tired of it. Because what I'm wondering <laughs> is, when you I'm, had to become so recognizable everywhere you went, people had to just mistaken you for Pee Wee all the time, I would think, well, at some point. Well, the, the, when I first started doing it, and I realized, okay, I'm doing two shows a night, seven nights a week at SeaWorld for four and a half months. Yeah. I first went and got short haircut and I had my hair dyed and my eyebrows. Before that, I was uh, wearing a, 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 a bad, like, sprayed... I, 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 I'd do my hair with, like, hairspray and then black spray gel, but it would, like, you know, run makeup. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then when I had my hair cut like that, I was like, well, even just walking through the park, it's like I can't get yeah. from uh, employee entrance to my dressing room without at least, you know, being polite and hello to, yeah. you know, a bunch of kids walking through. And you, you said know. you said basically yeah. they just moved you around through sea, SeaWorld parks for, at different times to kind yeah, of keep it yeah. fresh. What, and I, what I did realize, though, was when I found – oh, that's what – after after I had my hair cut and I realized just – in the park, I can't walk around, and <laughs> I had a, a toupee made. So oh wow! The, the whole time that I uh, did uh, the the show as Maestro Pee Wee, I had uh, my hair was actually like Billy Idol blonde, so I wouldn't have to look like him. And I went to a place that does like wigs for chemotherapy people because I couldn't find a wig that was right. I needed I needed uh, a part, mm -hmm. and it had to have uh, you know scalp show through it. Like I said, at that point yeah. he was still parting his hair on the side. So 
had this little thing made up and then I would pull my own hair around on the front and around the Oh, edges. okay. Yeah, but it was like little, had little hooks in here. And then I'd just paint those edges, my hair around there with um, uh, black shoe polish, which oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that had become a, quite a mess. Oh, that's why this thing is so stiff right now because it hasn't been washed since the last time. That's I so cool that you still have that though. But at least I didn't fuck six hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there is a part in there. Yeah, from when, oh, yeah, it used yeah. To, when it used to be parted and on that side. Now, yeah, so that was a part of like, okay, I don't want to have to look like him all the time. So yeah. I had the hair piece done. And then when I came to L.A. and I was doing the auto show, the easiest thing was to do the hair dye and get it cut again. Because it was every single weekend. They'd pick us up on Friday. We'd fly out Friday morning. We'd be gone Saturday, Sunday, come back Monday for an entire year. Wow. Al almost an entire I, I almost Like a road finished. comic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Except this company, since it was an auto custom car show event, yeah. they would send a stretch limo to pick you up. Oh, and wow. And take you to LAX. And, and had to have paid you very well, just, I'm sure. I would have, uh, yeah, I would have cleared over 100000 the first year I was in LA just from this one show. Alone. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> and that's when it got to be a little problematic. <laughs> what, well, tell us. But, tell well, actually, what I should say is in between the SeaWorld stuff, when I went to the entertainment department and they said, we want you to do Pee Wee instead of Maestro. We want you to do the laser show as Maestro Pee Wee. They said, and we're signing you to a year and a half contract. So we want to keep you as Pee Wee and we're going to send you either to Florida or San Diego during the winter. And <laughs> Guaranteed then, income, and great then, weather. <laughs> and then we'll do the Maestro Pee Wee show again next summer. Because each show was done for two years and then they rewrote a brand okay. new show. So we changed costumes, changed some music and stuff, but you know every show at SeaWorld had a two-year run before they flipped them over. Do you think you could have done Pee Wee forever? I mean, like if you were still making like making money off it, like an Elvis impersonator, would, do you think you would have ever you would have been able to keep doing it? I suppose. But really? I'd probably be sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm so happy working behind the scenes now. Yeah. When I was doing the custom car show. It was different than having my hair dyed and being in Cleveland. Because very seldom in Cleveland do people ever think, oh, that's Pee Wee Herman. At the, right, the but Amber anywhere joint. else they... But when I was now in L.A., everywhere, I mean, every bar, every discotheque, the grocery wow. store, the dry cleaners. And it gave me a real understanding for what a celebrity yeah. really goes through. And made me realize, you know what, I don't think I have what it takes to do this. <laughs> and, you know, and, and then by that time, uh, when I was at the, uh, when I was at the San Diego SeaWorld, I got a call from Ron Smith's Celebrity Lookalikes, which was a famous, like the only celebrity lookalike agency in LA for many, many years. And it was to just shoot a, a body double for the Big Top Pee Wee poster. Because they do like 25 posters, and they had to finish all 25 posters like this. So if Pee Wee himself came in, let's say he'd get paid, I don't know, let's just say $100,000. Okay? Right. Then another 100000 to pay for the photographer, for the makeup artist, for the composite people, for the graphics. And that's to do 25 finished posters. Yeah. So they bring in body doubles all the time. Uh, I'm not, even though I was an impersonator and a lookalike, I'm not considered his stand-in. I'm the body double. Because a stand-in is somebody who is the exact measurement, so when they light you, it's the same. I'm taller than him. Yeah. I'm 10 years younger. Now we're, now, now I've caught up, and he's annoyingly looking younger all of a sudden. Did you ever happen to meet Paul Rubens? Never, huh? We're going to make that happen. But, you know, I didn't, I, when I was going around the country... And there were other impersonators that I worked with, you know, and some of them were out of their flipping minds, like absolutely. Thought believe, they were. Or... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I am definitely, you know, so and so, and we're best friends, and blah. and then I also had weird things like there was a guy that camped out outside of my hotel once when we were in uh, Texas, and he was a, uh, a a painter, and he was like he was trying, he was like this is his only chance to get his scenic design work to Pee Wee, and he wants to, and he's like. You know, I, I, and all through breakfast, he just like wouldn't leave me alone. And I'm trying to be polite because 
I don't want to do anything to make somebody go, oh, Pee Wee Perman's a dick. Absolutely. I'm already, I'm already blessed enough to mildly resemble a mildly sound like somebody. And then, yeah, body language because of my mind. <laughs> No, that, that was one of those weird things, Jeff, I wanted to ask you to do, because one night you and I were, were hanging out in the back of the comedy store, we were talking, and I said that I'd seen the, the Pee Wee Holiday movie. And yeah. the first thing you said was, you said, he's all over the place. He has, He's using four or five different Pee Wee voices, and you started showing me how different the voices well, are. Oh, well, because when, when he started, when it was at the Groundlings, it, I could never do it. It was so, so high. And now, <clears throat> good grief. Mal's sort of about like down, like right here, you know, so his normal voice, voice when he's sort of talking is sort of my normal nasally. But, you know, before I had to put it up like here, and it just was like, meh. So, you know, I, I think a little bit of the voice, a little bit of the look, like anybody can look like Charlie Chaplin. It's a right. distinct look. You know? The I mean, essence of it. I, I didn't have the same nose. I'm not a, a nice Jewish boy. I'm a Scottish boy with no nose. <laughs> so I would do a lot of contouring makeup here, you know, to try to make it look wider and, and stuff. But then, you know, with the suit and stuff, it was like, I think I gave a reasonable, you know, facsimile of the character. So I, I came up to L.A. while I was working at the San Diego Park. They didn't tell me come in costume. So I drive all the way up and I get to the photographer's studio and uh, there's all these people dressed up like people. You didn't just keep a Pee Wee costume in your trunk or anything in those days? A suit? I had one that I had bought when I got back to Ohio. I got it for like 25 bucks. That's the one on the poster right there. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I came up and I basically I got the audition because of my mind body work. I did, I did tons of, my, uh, back when I was in Cleveland, my dad uh, worked for uh, American Greetings, the greeting card company. I did tons of like white glove modeling hand on mine, uh, greeting cards, calendars, posters. You know? Wow. So I, I did a lot of print yeah. modeling, character work, but print modeling. And so for print type stuff to like, you know, and hold that. Yeah. You know, some other look-alike might not have that ability to down. And, uh, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, we this one we shot differently. Yeah, I was going to ask you how did they do how did they do something like that? What what happened was the the photographer told me we're going to do these twenty five poses, and it was like oh, it was about an eight hour day. And I came in full makeup the day that I got you know that I performed. And for people Just watching this, if you've never been on a photo shoot, it's in it's intense because just for like an hour is it's really hard to smile to make your face not hurt to not get yeah, twitches and, and positions because there was one poster that was me it was Pee Wee with himself in a lion's mouth so they had me in a chair like this and and I was like this <laughs> you know, like holding it and then they get up here and shoot down like that like, yeah but I did live mannequin work at, a, at, at shopping malls for years. I used to go five minutes without blinking. Wow. So, I mean, as far as, you know, I think I lucked out on the gig because I had not the voice, yeah. not the looks, because they took his face and put it on all 25 yeah. of the posters. They told me right then, you're not going to be on the final poster. You know, I'm like... Uh, I don't care. This is still, yeah, yeah, that's still awesome. pretty cool. I mean, this, this thing has gotten me to Los Angeles. And, uh, and I'm, you know, working on a freaking poster board. <coughs> Went back to San Diego, finished up my contract, got to Ohio, started rehearsing for the second summer of the show, and I got a call from the photographer out here in L.A. And he said, they want to reshoot the final poster. And Paul wants to go on vacation and says, your suit looks just like his, so he wants you to come out and do it. Awesome. So, guess what? I'm on the final poster. With Paul's blessing. Uh, I, yes, yes. And uh, my suit, shoes, tie, shirt, like, you know, they just photoshopped his head on the... I mean, what the photographer told me was, he said, how did you do this? And they explained, the, and they showed him this picture that the photographer took the day that we shot the pictures. That was, I think, my best. Absolutely. Looking. That was the day we did it. So he showed Paul this photo, and, the, and he's like, oh, he looks like me. Use him. That's you know, great. And I mean, basically, it was really the body stuff. Uh, <clears throat> but the, the final poster that they had picked, the bar was behind my 
knees. Okay. You know, there wasn't a real bar there. The way they had it, the bar was here. And Paul Paul wanted to be flying forward off the trapeze. Okay. So now here's where you get your paycheck for <laughs> eight hours. I had a big black cushion and I was down on my knees like this and the photographer was up on a camera looking straight down and he'd go one, two, three and I'd go Oh, 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 yeah, that Again. totally makes sense. Again. <laughs> That's great, especially with the poster in the background right hundreds now as you're doing of that. times doing that. But, and the other thing is, when the uh, bad airbrusher, they didn't airbrush the scar out on my thumb. My big scar. Yeah, you told me that. I love that part <laughs> of the story. You can still see it there. So it's like my only proof that that's me. I mean, why would I lie? <laughs> so tell me about um, how it all ended. Oh. What <laughs> happened? Where were you? Like, what, what? I mean, how did it rock your life? Uh, well, like I said, I was going to make a really good living. The first year I was in L.A. just from weekends out of town making and we would make uh, public appearances you would have these were my headshots that I had back then and you know Jeff Scott as Pee Wee not Herman can't use the full name that's a copyrighted name so it was always Jeff Scott as Pee Wee and then at the auto show this is what I signed my autograph Jeff Scott's wacky world of Pee Wee so I would, you know, kids would buy this for a dollar, just like they oh, buy, yeah. buy a picture of uh, Jonathan Frakes, and then you'd stand in line and Jeff Scott know. as Pee Wee. Yeah, Jeff Scott as Pee Wee, and there's a huge poster behind me at the table set up. I was on the riser, and it said Jeff Scott as Pee Wee, Pee Wee's body double from Big Top Pee Wee. Yeah. Poster, Big Top Pee Wee poster. I didn't set foot on the st stage, the set. Uh, Anyway, I was down in, I was going to Florida, and I still am not really sure what happened. Somebody, you know there's a lot of people that just are really mean and annoying and evil and just want to have nothing better to do than stir up drama and try to... I think you and I both know create, quite a few of those. <laughs> create lawsuits and stuff. Yeah, well I was in Florida, and the second day, uh, before I, I got all dressed, Limo picked me up, went over to the convention center, uh, I was at my sp space starting to get set up, and the president and the people of the organization were like, "Yeah, I come talk to you." <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, some guy uh, called and said that he wants to sue because he was told that Pee Wee Herman was going to be here, and you're not Pee Wee Herman." I'm like, "Who said that?" And he's like, "We don't know. He won't tell us who he talked to. He's just..." confronting us and making a big stink and he wants free yeah. tickets probably somebody wants... who misunderstood and drove a long way and just wanted who knows whatever i mean everything in the you know I, I'm, I'm not gonna get sued over something like yeah, absolutely this. Been, at this point i've been pretty damn lucky you know uh but this guy caused like a huge stink and i don't know how somehow he got a hold of uh uh peewee's management and uh, it was like this guy was a ripoff and he was trying to say he was Pee Wee Herman and I was lied to and this is horrible and blah, blah, blah. You know, absolutely nothing of the truth. Yeah. And uh, so the next weekend I got a call from my manager and he's like, uh, yeah, they've wrapped you on the, <laughs> the rest of the tour because they got a copyright infringement notice from Pee Wee's management company. Rightfully so. They own the, the title. Right. And it was a $75,000 copyright infringement penalty for the auto show. What they were claiming, not for what you had show. done. Right, that, right. For what the person was claiming that, you know. And, and yes, they were selling, even though it all everything said Jeff Scott as Pee Wee, Jeff Scott as right. Pee Wee. You know, this one guy was like, and he couldn't show anywhere where it said, you know, Pee Wee Herman. Right, but people get scared, you know. And so... He got a hold of the management people. The management did the, 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 they sent me a cease and desist and said, unless we specifically hire you to work another project, you can't put the suit on again. And I'm like, okay. I mean, now, it was would a this real go bummer for because like a few you... months after that, I got a call to go to Japan and work at a theme park for a whole year. It's like where I've always <sighs> wanted to go. And I, I, I can't, for a young kid, I can't even tell you 
<laughs> now, now, were you <laughs> were you afraid that you would get sued, or were you signed to a company and the company just wouldn't allow you to do the character doing no, any no, of that Pee stuff? No, Herman is a copyrighted trademark character. It'd be like me trying to dress up. So they were okay. Band. So he was okay Somebody with it for a while, and then well, they decided when 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 Sea World <laughs> when I started at Sea World in San Diego, they were paying. SeaWorld had already, like I said, the, 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 the footage for the commercial for the first year I worked there was shot with Pee-wee's camera crew. So it got edited back in New York, and he saw that, had his manager look into it, and from what I was told, they negotiated an agreement now. I, I did have some correspondence with his manager once, and he's like, we don't know what you're talking. Turns out that everything was just oral so that there was no paper trace. They're like, you can do this, but you're going to do it like this and this okay. and this, and you can only do that, you know. So when I came to the San Diego Park, I rehearsed for about two weeks to go into an existing show. And, boy, that was I was, I was real favorite with the cast because I was replacing two, three characters that had this part of the show. that They were taking their roles out and putting me in. Uh, eventually, it became like my best family, my best six years of my life besides Cape Cod. So the t two best years of my life were all the Pee Wee stuff, really.